Uh, let me first tell you what DevOps actually is. Just uh, according to the definition, what does it say? That it's a collaboration of development and ops. But exactly it is not the case. It is a process actually. A uh, process in the sense, normally what happens in a software company, people write code. Those people are called developers. Okay, they write programs. And then they compile that code. Suppose it's a Java program, then you need to compile it that forms a binary and that binary will be executable and it runs in a server from where people will get certain uh, front end through which they communicate with the software. So that's one part that the developer develops and then uh, compiles the code it goes to a server. Okay. And on the other hand how does this entire flow happens? Let's now break it down. It should not be like this that uh, the developer will develop and just compile and send it to the server. It should not be like this. What if the code has some problem or uh, it is not well written or having errors. So in between there are other processes as well. Like the developer develops then it goes to a QA guy. QA the quality assurance guy who actually tests the code if everything is fine. Then he passes it on to the ops people. Ops people are those who are taking care of the servers, the networking and the deployment. So uh, when everything falls into place, then only it goes to production. So this is how normally it happens. But since there are different types of people involved in it, like a developer has different skill set. He's a programmer, uh, a quality assurance guy, he's a tester. He knows how to test code. He might not be very good at programming, but he can test the application uh, and the ops people they may be good at the operating system networking uh, and everything but they uh, should, might not be very good at programming so in order to bring everything in one uh, one table uh, we have certain practices which is devops okay so uh, the agenda for today would be uh, to understand what are the development methodologies we have for software development and then, uh, then we will move on uh, to the new concept or the DevOps. Like uh, you have to first understand what traditional things are going on in the industry. Like all companies now in the world are not adopting DevOps, have not yet adopted. That is why we are telling this is a very good career opportunity because around uh, till now around 20% of companies have started adopting DevOps. Like it is very new. Like from 2009 it has started so around 2011 some big companies started adopting it and now everyone is jumping into DevOps. All companies are talking about Agile, Scrum, DevOps, these kind of concepts. So these are some uh, new words you would be hearing all through the training course. So I'll explain each and every of this jargon whenever you have doubts you can ask me also. So uh, DevOps practices are uh, now the uh, being adopted by all companies and uh, just only 20% have adopted them. So most of them are going to come in and adopt this methodology. In order to understand how to adopt this, you have to first understand how the existing ones uh, uh, work and what, what are their problems so that we can uh, implement DevOps practices and uh, remove those problems. So we will uh, go through that and then we will move on to understand what are the various kinds of tools we will use to DevOps. Like DevOps cannot be just uh, uh, just implemented like that. There should be some programs, softwares which you will use and uh, adopt these practices. So those are called the building blocks of DevOps and uh, these tools uh, will enable you to adopt uh, the automated DevOps uh, pipeline, the infrastructure. So I'll uh, teach you how to use those tools, what are those tools and how they work. And uh, after that we'll discuss, uh, so th I'll give you just an introduction of those tools today and in subsequent uh, sessions we will be using one by one of those tools and you will learn how, how they are being used. And then uh, we will uh, learn about the benefits of DevOps. So uh, that uh, you already know that it uh, 
makes uh, development life cycle faster and more uh, more reliable so we'll discuss more into that and then we'll discuss some best practices of devops so that would be all for uh, today's session because uh, till then you will be overloaded with lots of information i know uh, but you try to uh, once the the session is over you will try to i mean uh, then uh, regress it i mean you will you will revise it in your minds and uh, for the next week you will try to read about it in the internet so that uh, when we come into the next class uh, uh, then we can do more and more hands on so first of all uh, let's uh, discuss a bit about this uh, like who should uh, benefit by doing the devops so everyone who is in it industry that's fine for them to come and learn devops and uh, even managers who are in the leadership team and uh, operation software people everyone and even like then i said if someone is wanting to switch into it he should learn devops and can easily assimilate because devops gives you a entire picture of the entire it industry so that is it and there are some prerequisites actually they are not mandatory but they are good to have so if you know anything about waterfall or agile then it's good uh, do do you know about have you heard about these models in uh, anyone what yes, is the model? Yeah, we are i know about this one but not more okay uh, okay okay condition. okay then i'll explain you and for then okay. no problem i'll i'll tell you no, what no. these are these okay. are just concepts these are just concepts i'll explain what they are these are used for uh, software development life cycle so i'll explain what they are and uh, those who are in testing they should know all these things so we will cover them then uh, these are some good to have prerequisites but no problem they are not mandatory okay and uh, you should know about uh, network management infrastructure a little bit of coding standards so these are some good to have prerequisites but uh, even if you don't have don't worry we will by the at towards the end of the course you would be knowing most of these things mm -hmm. okay okay so uh first let me tell you what devops culture is like people think devops is a job or a kind of uh, it's not like that uh, develop being a developer is okay it's a job like a developer writes code or a tester he tests software in the it industry a system administrator he will deploy in various uh, operating systems so this is how uh, they are differentiated but what is devops it is not actually a uh, a job it is a practice it's a culture like uh, say uh, i'll ask you a question like there is a developer okay and uh, he writes code but can he uh, deploy anything in the server or do a real time uh, troubleshooting uh, have any idea about that like a no, developer he, uh, he need to do it in the in can say in the development uh, yes. environment and mm -hmm. after it is working fine then he can go he can do a do a test environment correct the correct project, then they can yes. do production but he would not be given access to a live server right he will right. do it in his own development server or staging server or his own machine okay right, right. so he doesn't learn about the real tire real life troubleshooting like whatever happens in real life in a server he doesn't have exposure to it but ops guy he knows that when server is down or there is showing some error like 404 page not found or 500 internal server error these terms uh, he would be facing in live server and fixing it but uh, the development guy he would not be able to know what is going on in live server so this is one next similarly as a operations person the operation person uh, suppose there is an error and showing in the screen uh, which seems to be something related to a software bug and the ops guy mostly what he can do he can check the logs in the server and know that there is some problem but he cannot uh, fix it he has to go to the developer and tell that there is some program uh, error so you fix it so this is another demerit like being an ops guy being a dev guy it's a demerit 
that you don't have access to troubleshooting. So there should be a collaboration between the development team and the ops team so that they work hand in hand and resolve issues. Each one should know everything. I mean, that is how DevOps works. Like, you do not have to be a good programmer, but you should know that uh, how development works or how it can be automated so that uh, the person doesn't have to do anything in hand. If there is an error, it would not at all come to production. It would be somewhere filtered before coming to production. So the ops guy won't have to deal with it. So that, that is how this one happens, uh, the DevOps. So the DevOps culture ha has a few, uh, few uh, like uh, there are certain good practices and uh, some fundamentals. So one of them is partnership. Like a DevOps should always partner uh, between the operations and development. That's how a DevOps team is formed. And then uh, DevOps, gives you a being a control in the IT infrastructure like you know about development you have automated the entire thing and you know about operations as well and uh, that leads to faster deployments because as I told you I will teach you about some tools later on so those tools help in uh, completely automating the infrastructure so that is how the DevOps saves time for a company like it does not happen manually like people write code manually, that is where it ends. And after that, when they build uh, and then put it into the server, that every process is uh, managed by some tools and makes it uh, makes the entire thing completely automated. So uh, that is how DevOps works and that is what DevOps culture is, to automate everything and uh, work uh, hand in hand uh, with all departments. Okay. So what are the various building blocks of DevOps? First is code, which the developer writes, and then the code is built. Built means compiling code, like uh, in computer science, when you write a code in Java, you compile it into a binary, or uh, in C Sharp, if you write a code, then you compile to a .exe. Okay, so that is the build process. And once the code is compiled and built, it is executable. So it can be executed in a server and then it is tested and then it is packaged. Packaging means like you have uh, heard like uh, all the packages which we download. Say you want to install an application, uh, the Skype application or this go to meeting application. Then you download a software, the EXE file if you are in Windows and then install it. So that is a package. Okay, and then you might have seen those packages have version number, version 1.0, 2.0. So that is how, uh, that is the release, like uh, which version of software has or what uh, features and uh, that would keep on increasing with the release. So that is release management, that is also a part of DevOps and all these steps are automated. And then uh, there is configuration management, like when you install it in some ser some server, that server might be having some config files which has some details about where the software is kept and what port it should listen to and uh, such other uh, configuration settings. So that is also managed here. Uh, and uh, another building block of DevOps is application and infrastructure monitoring. Like after the code is deployed, you have to monitor whether uh, the server is running properly or not if everything is up or not all the time because uh, all the websites like you might have seen google.com almost always whenever you open you can see the site it's never down so how is that possible that means they are monitoring it continuously it might be going down but they have uh, some uh, mechanism by which they do not make you uh, make it obvious. You cannot see uh, that Google is down. Maybe some server is going down, but they have a line of servers and your request is served by uh, any of those. So even if some of them are down, you would not be able to detect it. So that is how they uh, manage the entire thing. And these are the various blocks of uh, the DevOps. Like code, build and test, this part is taken care by the dev team. And uh, this part is taken care of by the operations team. But this is the scenario now. 
But after learning about the DevOps tools, the entire thing can be taken care of by any person of the DevOps team. So that is the idea how and how to do that, that we'll do in this course, okay? So, sure. Sure. yes, uh, to begin with, you might feel some concepts, there's so many concepts are being told whether I will be able to do it or not. But it's not that when you start using those tools, that is the real DevOps work you would be doing. Right, uh, but right. uh, since this is the introductory session, today you will just learn about, you will hear about various concepts, what it exactly are. Even if uh, you can get at least half of what I'm telling, then also I will be happy for today. <laughs> because yeah. uh, because I know, because the first time when even I was introduced into all these concepts, then even I uh, thought that what all the, what is going on, so many new words I'm hearing and it's uh, overwhelming but it is actually not when you start using the tools you will understand that uh, what you are doing actually. Okay. Oh, good. And uh, these, uh, these yeah. are like the, the practicals it will be like how you will uh, do the practical part. I will uh, do it in uh, my system and share the screen okay and you will see how and what I am doing and then after this uh, class, you will try it yourself in your own system uh, because normally we will have this weekend classes. So okay. I'll show you, I'll share my screen and uh, show you everything, how I'm sure. doing and what I'm doing. So after that, uh, once the class is over, later on you can try it in your own system. If you have any problem, you will mail us in that support at intellipad.com and if I'll clear the doubts and tell you how to do that or in the next class we'll have a short time where we will solve those issues okay right okay. Like that will be, be great yeah so so is the framework or? DevOps uh, yeah. no DevOps is a practice it is not actually a framework but okay. uh, we have certain tools which I'll tell you which uh, which are frameworks to implement DevOps okay okay we have certain tools like Jenkins, there is one tool, I'll tell you how that is, uh, how that works. And that is a framework which will uh, allow you to implement the DevOps practice. Okay. It is not, DevOps itself is not a software or any framework. It is just a name of a practice where development and operation, everything happens together and uh, in collaboration and uh, automation is uh, applied so that things become automatic and fast and also uh, it follows uh, a development methodology like I was telling you know uh, about there are two methodologies waterfall and uh, this agile so okay. DevOps follows a methodology called agile I will discuss that okay, okay. Uh, so uh, why are we using DevOps uh, the question is as we already discussed like dev people, they know half the story and ops people know half the story in IT. They know how to write code and deploy, uh, but don't know how to deploy. Ops people know how to deploy, but they know don't know about the coding part. So in order to resolve this issue, we have uh, this DevOps practices. And another thing, uh, DevOps allow you to simplify and advocate agility. I'll tell you what agile is agile is a kind of a framework and a practice so in the next slide we will discuss about that and then measurable business benefits through integratable IT process means as I said when DevOps automates everything and uh, then everything is faster and quickly deployed error free so that's why uh, it has business benefits the company is able to uh, do things faster and better so uh, DevOps helps in business. So that's why all companies are slowly moving to DevOps. Okay. Now, uh, here, uh, what are the common goals for a DevOps? We will do this very quickly. I will, I'll tell this very quickly because I don't want to get you, I mean, you will, you should not get overwhelmed by so much of text. Uh, we will better concentrate on the tools of DevOps rather than going through all those theories so you can even yourself read this out okay I'll just tell you the common goals of DevOps practice first is 
to increase the deployment frequency that means uh, like I said, uh, what, uh, how does DevOps helps us? Uh, like I said, in a app development company, they quickly want to release app versions. Okay, so how can uh, that be done in a normal uh, IT scenario? It is not possible because the developer has to do everything manually, and deployment is also manual. So DevOps. Uh, has increased the deployment frequency. It has reduced the lead time for changes. Like if any small change occurs, then the automated tools help uh, to make that change in the software very quickly. And uh, there is faster recovery when uh, problems occur. Well, what does that mean? If the server is down or some software problems has occurred, since the DevOps tools are automated, they can roll back to the earlier working version. So very quickly everything happens. and uh, there is a shift left in quality of code, uh, testing and architecture. What does that mean? There is a complete uh, change in the way things worked in testing and deployability uh, because everything has been automated. If the tests for a certain code fails, then, uh, then automatically it gets sold back. It, it is not implemented in the production version. And finally, uh, there are some loop, the feedback loops like since all the teams are working together as one team the DevOps team so they communicate more because normally what happens in companies where there are no DevOps teams there is a different dev team and a different ops team so in those cases uh, what happens uh, they do not communicate much only when the development is over they will tell the ops team that uh, you can uh, apply this code uh, in the server so in the, such cases, uh, it happens that uh, the communication is not uh, much between the teams, and they know don't know much about each other, and don't. And when something fails, there is a blame game. So when DevOps team comes into picture, it takes care of this uh, communication part, and there is a uh, feedback loop. Like the, if there is a problem uh, from the ops, they will tell the developers and if there is a problem from developer side, they can effectively discuss and resolve them. So everyone is responsible. Okay, so that is one part. Now there are here are some concepts. So before going into that concept, let me first tell you something else. And then we will understand this diagram because uh, now if you go through this, you won't be able to understand much. So that's why let me let me just open a notepad. Okay. Like I was telling you about uh, that waterfall model and the uh, agile model, right? Yeah. Let's let me just explain it a bit to you so that. You will, uh, you will know because these are just theoretical parts. If being a DevOps guy, you would just use this as theory. This is not something which will help you when you're working on a server or you're working on a program. These are th some theory, but these are important concepts. Okay, say yeah, there is a you have to build a software. Okay, someone has given you the task to build a software, and uh, say we want to build a mobile app or uh, mobile app okay so first what happens what is the first stage before building the app say you want to build an app which will show you the scores of a football match okay suppose it's a sports app it shows you what what football matches are going today uh, what soccer matches are being played today and what is the score you want to see that okay so first what happens the first stage of that is conceptualization Okay. 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 This is a con, uh, con. Okay. We can call it conception to be precise. Conception. What does that mean? We we know that what we we have we discussed that what is going to be built. What should be the various features of that program? Okay. So that is the conception before building anything. You discuss with people, right? that uh, what is what various features will be provided in the software and uh, how it will work so discussion and uh, conception so that is 
first step. Then what happens after conception, there is a, another stage called initialization. And then we have, uh, let me list it down, then I'll explain. Then we have analysis, then we have uh, design. construction um, testing and then deployment like what are this waterfall is a model of uh, waterfall is a model which defines how a software is uh, built these are the various stages of the software development life cycle and waterfall model tells us that everything should go one by one not together okay it should go one by one first you should know the concept and then you should initialize like you should start the work and then you should analyze what are the various features that we need to do and how it should work and then you should design the software and then once the design is done, you should write code that is construction. You should build the software. And then once it is built, you should do the testing. And then once it is tested, you should do the deployment. So these are the logical series of steps how a software is made, okay, how a software is built. So first there is the conception, initialization, analysis, design, construction, testing and development. And waterfall model, what it requires that everything should happen in sequence. Like a, water, uh, like a waterfall, what happens? It is in, first this one happens, then it goes top down. That is, that is the idea. Like this one happens, then this one, then this one, then this, this, this and this. So that is how a waterfall model works and that is the existing or traditional idea it is basically dependent on each other right yeah dependent on each other if there is no concept this guy cannot do any he what he will start with like initialization he has to start the program writing the program or doing analysis but without a concept he cannot do even design without knowing what they are going to build the designer cannot design it so everything is interdependent okay as you said and also top down so the when this is not over this cannot be started when this is not over this cannot be started so this is how it works and this is a traditional model why because devops does not use this okay so we will learn what we use in devops and how we do uh, normally this is how it happens now those companies who don't use devops they do it this way one by one they do it and then they deploy it into the server but this takes a lot of time because well, suppose you have a ops guy and here the development is going on at this stage so ops guy is now free and sitting there when his uh, i mean when uh, the software will be ready to deploy then he will work overnight and build the server and deploy the code at that time, these people would be having nothing to do if there is, say, there is just one project for that company. Okay? So this is not a very well-balanced approach. So that's why how, and it takes a lot of more time as well because, say, something goes wrong in this model, since it is a top-down, say something is wrong, nobody knows it until, suppose some developer has, knows, but he has somehow bypassed it or not told anyone. So until it goes to testing this stage, nobody knows it. And then once the tester knows it, the tester will, sorry, the tester will send it back to this stage, analysis okay. or conception as well. Because uh, suppose some concept is wrong, that's why it's not working. So they will again rethink about it and do things like that. Okay. So uh, it works in that manner. So when it goes back again, so that is not a very good practice because most of the people are again waiting 
that when the software they will repair the whatever problem is there it comes down again then they work so that is the traditional way so most of the people are coming to office and not doing work i mean uh, they they are not to blame because uh, it's a waterfall model when their turn will come they will act otherwise they would not be working okay so in a, that is traditional method and takes more time so for devops practices we use a model called agile okay agile model but here the interesting part is agile model is uh, agile model is having the same components as the uh, waterfall model okay same components but the manner of execution is not like that the way it happens in uh, the waterfall model so let me tell you how it happens here this part is done this part is done let me first draw, draw the interrelation then i'll tell you what exactly it is like here these three parts okay conception initialization and analysis these will go parallelly in agile model like the they will all sit together and discuss what the concept is even the design team development testing everyone will join that meeting so everyone will together listen that what they are going to build okay so this three steps will happen parallelly they will learn the concept and then parallelly work on the initialization and since all the members are there in that meeting and uh, they know what is going on so everyone will do the research uh, that uh, how this can be done and similarly once this phase is over then parallelly uh, these phase happens like they do not wait until the entire software is built okay they build small parts send it for testing they build small parts the design is built this guy writes code and sends to testing same time okay so parallelly this part is happens for uh, small portions of the software instead of doing the entire software and then testing and even the, while doing the small portion after testing that is also tried out in the server by the ops guy so this entire thing is continuously happening okay so that that is how it is different from uh, the waterfall model not like the entire software is built tested and then sent to the user or sent to the server it happens like one feature they are doing it one day and then uh, testing it sending to the server suppose they are building a website so website has many uh, pages like home page the uh, contact us page the services page like there are many pages so they would parallelly be uh, doing components instead of doing the entire thing and deploying on the server they will do some certain portions test it and then deploy it and see what is going on okay so that is how the agile model works why why is it uh, good because it is iterative iterative means again and again they will uh, do small portions and in that way finish it instead of doing the entire thing at one time so everyone is working and everyone is involved in this process okay and also because it is iterative it is flexible to change like while the work is being done somebody said that no i don't like this part you have to change it so you can easily change it because you are used to working in iterations in small portions but when entire thing is built and then some change has to go then it would be more difficult so that's why this model is being used by devops so that parallelly most works is being done okay and waterfall model is sequential mostly these questions are uh, these are theory they are asked in interviews like what is the feature of waterfall model so waterfall model you will say is sequential it happens step by step and uh, until one of the steps is over the next step is not uh, going to be started but agile model is iterative you take small portions of the entire thing and 
complete it then you take small portion of that thing and then do it again until the entire task is finished okay